Well, welcome back to Mr. Obsolete's Vintage Homesteading. Today, we're going to be talking about chainsaws. Haven't done too much with them lately. The weather's been a real negative effect on it, getting out and doing stuff. But anyway, I'm going to do a series, not in line, but just hit and miss. And I'll start out talking about our smaller saws and work our way through the midsize and up to the big ones. And we'll show them in action and talk about their features and whatnot. So, anyway, this little saw here is sold by John Deere, and it's a, what they call a 40V. And they want you to believe it's a 40cc saw, which it is not. It's only a 35.2cc, but you know how those marketing types are. They're just like politicians. Can't trust them. But... Anyway, this saw was a gift quite some time ago, and it was in really crappy shape. The bar and the chain were just rusted solid, and really scroungeo looking. And but it turned over and had really good compression and whatnot, and good hot spark. So I decided to give it a go through. And the thing that was interesting is that uh, the saw was very low hours on it because. When the saw was assembled new, the throttle linkage was set up incorrectly and it only had half throttle. And so the original owner was really dissatisfied with it and they threw it out in the back corner of a garage for years and just sat there and got the bar all rusted up and screwed up and the chain was completely messed up on it, covered in dirt and yick. So anyway, as you can see, it's a nice clean saw. And... John Deere didn't make their own saws. The first ones were Remington, Remington Firearms. And then this saw here is made by the Kiritz Company of Japan. And if you're not familiar with the name Kiritz, I know you're familiar with Echo, and that's uh, Kiritz at the parent company. So anyway, what they did, Kiritz started in 1947 making farm machinery branched out in the mid 60s they started making chainsaws in 1972 they came to the US and set up a distribution parts place warehouse and whatnot and uh, sold them as key rits. a few private label saws too I have a craftsman from that era 70 cc and then in 1978 they changed the name to echo so key rits, the engineers they had were pretty inventive. They did a number of things that were advanced for the time. From what info I've been able to find, they were the first ones to do an anti-vibe saw. And some of the other equipment they made, they were the first ones to put out a backpack blower in 1975. And 1977 had a handheld blower, leaf blower and whatnot. Well, like I say, Kiritz was kind of inventive did a lot of different things. One thing they did that was kind of unusual and kind of tease in with our hobbies. You know, my main hobby is collecting anything and everything with engines and motors in them or on them. And so Kiritz made snowmobile engines. And so we have a 1975 Mercury, that's right, Mercury Outboard Marine, made snowmobiles. And they used a Kia Ritz 440cc engine in that. We have one of those. We'll show sometime in the future. But anyway, like I say, they have a lot of really good features on these that other companies should have copied. And so we'll have come over and show what they are. Okay, one of the best features of this saw, and it's better than almost any other saw, is this knob right here. You can adjust the amount of oil the volume of oil on the chainsaw chain and bar. Just simply turn it back and forth. And you know, easy, simple access. You know, the carburetor adjustments are right here. The muffler's just right out in the open here. Easy to access to clean. Air filter's right here. And kill switch is right here. And your choke is right here. This knob here is your high idle, so you pull this in and rotate it. And then when it starts, you just kind of pull it off and let it go right back down to an idle. Now, like I say, it's an anti-vibe saw too. 
but this is obviously not a chain break, it's just a hand guard. But, and, you know, easy access for the fuel here, and you see it says 20 to 1. I actually run it at 24 to 1 with the Red Armor or the Bardol VBA. And here's your oil fill for the reservoir for the bar and the chain. So, you know, it's got really good, excellent ergonomics. Now the every saw has its good and bad, so this has lots of good features. It's got a couple of not real bad bads, but a little bit bads. One of them is kind of heavy. Without the bar and chain, it's 11 pounds, and like I say, it's just 35 cc, 35.2 cc. Now my mini bat, mini Mac McCulloch, is a 33 cc saw. And with the bar, the chain, and the complete saw, it's only nine and a half pounds. So it's a little bit porky for what it is, but it's smooth and really nice running. And the other minor drawback to it is that it's not real powerful. And I find that on the early keyrit saws like this, and some of the early Echoes too, that they're not overly powerful. They're adequate, but you know this is just a pleasure to use. It's smooth and quiet and nice. It's just an excellent little saw. So anyway, the other thing I did to it is the original bar and the chain here were not really good. It had a quarter inch pitch on it, so I put on a 3 8 low profile, which works a whole lot better. And these could run up to a 16 inch bar. So, like I say, they're kind of rare because I don't think they were a very big seller for John Deere. And when they were selling them as key rits, they were in a pretty crowded market, so you don't see them very often. I only have a couple of key rit saws. So anyway, really nice, excellent build quality, great ergonomics, a little bit heavy, and moderate power, but other than that, these are really nice. So if you have a chance to pick up one of these early saws, I would recommend it. The only drawback, since they weren't a big seller, is that there isn't much in the way of parts for them. But if they've been taken well care of, yeah, they'll be around for a long time yet. So I'm going to go out and do a little bit of light cutting with it. So we'll see you out in the brush. Well, we're out in the outback here. So first thing we're going to do is cut this kindling here, and then. You know, we did a video on this saw buck a long time ago. So there are a lot of things in our older videos. If you're new to the channel, you should go back and watch them. We cover a lot of different th things. So anyway, we we'll get our little John Deere Kiritz running here, and we'll be right back when we're ready to cut. You can see it works really well for average use this thing is really a great little saw to have well next we're going to go over and cut up some actual logs
Okay, well, we got some logs to cut up here. We started doing these a while back. We had a blow down, done a video on it when we were using the Steel 034 to cut it up. But the weather took us out. We couldn't get out here and cut for a long time. So today's one of the first few days of good weather we've had. So we'll get the saw started and we'll start cutting. You can see it's pretty efficient for a little nipper. So anyway, we'll call that good for today. See you on the next exciting vintage video.